Henry had health issues from birth. He had projectile vomiting, uh, sinus infections, eczema, you know, a lot of issues that we saw the pediatrician for regularly. There were tests and there were procedures and there were hospitalizations, and it wasn't until he was in ninth grade that he was actually diagnosed with celiac disease, and that was by accident. I knew I was getting sick, I didn't know why, and that was a source of frustration because I couldn't control for when or how or why. I would all of a sudden be sidelined for two to three days. I was out of school very often with stomach pains, sidelined for three days. I would have to miss sports games, pizza parties, birthdays, you name it. And it wasn't until somebody decided that he probably needed sinus surgery and he was going to have a preoperative testing for the sinus surgery that I said to the pediatrician at this point, you know, run everything. I don't care what it costs. I don't care if insurance covers it. We need to run everything that hasn't been run before because I know my child and there's something seriously wrong. I had probably a gallon of blood drawn from me in 18 different tubes. They tested for everything that could have been tested for. And when the panel came back, I had incredibly high celiac antibodies. I got a call from the pediatrician who said that his antibodies were, in her words, off the chart, and that uh, he had celiac disease. My favorite foods included pasta, pizza, burritos, everything that a traditional 14-year-old would absolutely love. And when I found out I couldn't eat it, the next six months were very, very tough adjusting. Um, I did start immediately cooking gluten-free for the family. What is terrific is the profusion of gluten-free products. Even five years ago, you could not find gluten-free bread in the grocery store. Now you can go into any grocery store and there's gluten-free pasta, there's gluten-free burritos. Uh, restaurants have gluten-free menus. We're still at the point that one out of six people with celiac disease are diagnosed and five of six aren't. So the next step is to get these people tested, get them diagnosed, and get them healthy. The accuracy rate is so high nowadays for such little effort. Had I been able to do that, I might have been diagnosed three or four years earlier. The big piece now for us is to educate the physicians so that they're the ones who recommend the tests. And the other piece of it is that people with celiac disease have other issues. If he hadn't been diagnosed, he could have been at risk for stomach cancer for later in life, for osteoporosis, uh, increased other autoimmune disorders. He already has the thyroid disease because he went 15 years without being diagnosed. We hear from many, many people on a weekly basis who are putting themselves on the gluten-free diet because they think they have celiac disease. And the danger in that, without having the confirming blood test and the biopsy, you are not doing your further workup to find out if you have any of these other things. And that's pretty dangerous. I think that anyone with celiac disease can do everything that a normal person can do. It still remains with me that I have the disease and obviously if I go out with friends or if I go to a party there are some restrictions and some dietary needs and steps that I have to take. Um, but I go to the gym, I play in intramural sports, I, I go to college. My big moment came when he went to celiac camp and he was a junior counselor. And he came back from camp and he posted on Facebook He posted on his Facebook page, celiac diagnosed May 2008. And that is when I knew that he was okay and we were okay and it was going to be okay. <laughs>